one of the things that I want to talk about, I've made kind of a, a list and stuff because I've gone through and I crammed all the different information and everything into and why you need to be prepared now. And we're going to start right now. The first one on the list, as we all know, is the financial crisis. Okay. The financial crisis is it's a basically a situation which the value of the financial institutions um, or assets drops rapidly, you know, like a crash or um, all of a sudden, you know, the stock market just starts taking a dip and then the next day it does the same thing. And then we're in a really bad situation. And this can occur due to a variety of different types of reasons for all of you who don't know. Uh, such as an economic recession, uh, a financial mismanagement, you know, I mean, we've all been through that, um, or all these different types of bubbles that we get, you know, the housing market bubble that bursts. Financial crisis can have a severe consequences uh, for the economy, including high unemployment, which they are already predicting that by June, July of this coming year, they expect to be have um, in just this country alone, over two and a half million people out of a job. That could be one of you. It could be me. It could be anybody. We don't know. The unknown is what is getting us. Okay. The reduced uh, economic growth of this country or of this world, because that is a huge thing that is going on. And, you know, you got some of the examples, so some of you people know where I'm coming from and what this relates to. Uh, we had the global financial crisis in 2008. We all remember that one. And that one lasted through almost 2012 before we started coming out of that. We had the global um, crisis there with the dot-com bust, all right, in 2000. And then in 2020, we had the pandemic. And then all the stock markets and stuff tank, grocery stores were empty, there was no supply chain, there was no nothing. Everybody got caught with their pants down. Uh, nobody's ever dealt with something like this before, you know? And I, at that point, that woke up some people to the world of preppy, all right? At that point, we didn't all look so crazy anymore. And we all need to remember 2020. It just happened a few years ago, all right? This affected everybody in the world. Everybody in the world was affected in one way, shape or form of you couldn't get something, you couldn't buy something, it wasn't available, you couldn't get it shipped to you, um, stores were closed, the whole nine yards. So it was very difficult for a lot of people and that should have been a wake up call. It should have been a big wake up call, folks, but it wasn't. You know, this financial crisis that we're going to be coming into, um, I have a bad feeling it's going to cover quite a bit of different areas. And I'm going to touch on them right here. The stock market. All right. It's going to affect the stock market because the stock market really has been flat. All right. It has its up days, its down days. You know, it hasn't really shot way up or anything else. Oh, you hear the analysts and stuff and they're saying, oh, well, you know, it went up four or five hundred points today. Yeah, well, it dropped another three the next day, three the next day, three the next day. It just wipes it all out. So it's been kind of flat. All right. It hasn't really peaked up and it hasn't really crashed. It's just staying on an even keel because the stock market doesn't know what's going to be taking place. OK, high inflation. Now, we all know about high inflation. You guys know that every time that you buy anything, it costs you a lot more money. All right. Recession. Now, the government does state that we are not in a recession, which I think is BS. But that's just my opinion. OK, I believe we're already in a recession because look how long this has been going on. And, you know, they are breathing a little bit of uh, um sigh of relief with some of the reports that just came out and stuff but is it really enough folks i mean do they think we're that stupid that we can't read between the lines is that what they really think i think the government really thinks that and there are a lot of people out there that believe everything that the government says and they'll die by those words 
But uh, the rest of us here, we kind of use our heads because we're preppers. We are wanting to be prepared. You know, the high energy prices. I think this is going to get a lot of people. And this is going to have a huge effect on your pocketbook. The price of energy, rather you're using electricity, you're using propane, you're using natural gas, fuel oil, uh, coal, whatever it is that you use, it's going to start costing us more. All right? Like I said in the very beginning, they're already talking and they've already stated that by the middle of this year, gas prices by summertime are going to be back up over $4 a gallon. Where do you think that's going to put the diesel prices at, folks? Really? All right? Because diesel prices down here in Florida are running uh, between 510 and 535 a gallon right now. And as it keeps climbing, it's going to make it harder and harder for truck drivers, especially independent truck drivers, to afford to run their trucks because they're not making nothing on any of these loads. All right? Point blank. And we're going to get to that here in just a second. Because that's another part of this crisis. We have the soaring interest rates. All right. The interest rates for if you're buying a car, if you're buying a home. Now, there are a few states that are still exempt from these high interest rates. And Florida is one of them. It be, it's because everybody from the north is moving to Florida. So we down here, the markets haven't really been affected yet. Yes, the interest rates have gone up, but people are paying those high prices. What I'm worried about is, uh, are they going to be able to afford those high prices on these homes down here with these high interest rates? You know, if you're paying anywhere between three to $500,000 for a house, you tack on a 6 7% interest rate, unless you have really good credit and a lot of money to put down, it's going to be real tough. All right. Now, the housing crisis that is going on in this country is just absurd all right there's people that are being evicted by the thousands per day throughout this country all right no joke folks do your homework all right here in florida you know the evictions are going out left and right especially in these apartments and uh, mostly like apartment complexes and stuff it's affecting the lower class people but they're working this is the thing that sucks. They're out there, they're doing their job, and they're working 40, 50 hours a week and everything else, but they can't afford the rent prices on top of the energy prices, on top of the food prices, on top of everything else. They can't do it. And they're working. What's wrong with this picture? Something needs to be done for us American people. Because we the people are getting a little bit tired of being steamrolled and paying these high prices because the government is spending and spending and spending. I mean, our debt ceiling, if they don't raise a debt ceiling by the 19th, we're in trouble. So they're going to have to do something here real soon because if Congress doesn't raise the debt ceiling by the 19th, we're in trouble, folks. And we're already setting at over 30 some odd trillion dollars in debt. 30 some odd trillion. Imagine that. It's just unbelievable. We're setting ourselves up for a major failure of a biblical proportion. I'm just telling you, if you're not getting prepared, there is something really wrong with you believing what the government is saying. Now, the last part of this financial crisis is the shipping crisis. You haven't heard a word about this, okay? You don't hear anything on the news about it. It's all been hush-hush, but the news is out there. And this is what's taking place. We all know that Charlie Victor 19 over in China has took a huge toll. Now they closed down the country for a while. Then the people revolted and took to the streets and were rioting and everything else. And because they got tired of being locked up like wild animals in their own homes and they couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't go to work. But what happened is this has put the whole shipping industry in chaos, all right? 
things have slowed way down. You see, it takes a long time to start building these factories back up and start producing what they were producing back before 2020, All right? It's not like you can just flip a light switch and everything's fine. It's not working that way. Factories are running at half capacity. A lot of the cargo ships that are coming from China over to here are not even full. And it's taking longer to get the product from point A to point B being here in the USA. Then once it gets here, you have California that decided to change the rules and regulations on a lot of the, the truckers. So you put on January 1st, they put 70,000 truckers out of business. They can no longer run their trucks in California because they do not meet the new standards that have been set forth. Period. So what is taking place? Truckers with older trucks can't go into California to pick up loads because they're not allowed into the state. They're illegal. The trucks will be impounded, they'll be fined, and everything else. So nobody's going in there with an older truck. There's a lot of old trucks on the road, folks. I hate to tell you this, but it's the truth. Okay? This shipping crisis is going to get really interesting really quick. All right.